Hello everyone, this is Saiba again, and I want to do a quick tutorial on a couple questions that some people have been asking. For one, they want to know how to download the font.com um, fonts to their Apple MacBook, as well as why haven't the fonts that they've downloaded to their MacBook have not been showing up. So hopefully this video isn't too technical and that, that you guys can kind of follow me and understand what's going on and how to do these things. So. The font that I want to use, I want to use a font with the little curlies, which I show you in our design space in a moment, because I want to show you one of the things that I've learned when I first got started. So this Banana Yeti font is what I actually want to use. So I'm going to download it to my Apple MacBook, and you see that it popped up down here as a zip file. And for people that don't know what a zip file is, I use this analogy to try to describe it. Like imagine you having a suitcase and you're packing and you put your shirts in, your shoes in, your socks and other things in. So what a zip file can be like an analogy for is like a suitcase. And for what the files are inside of it, you can say that that's your clothing. So that's all a zip file is. You click the zip file to open up. And two or one of things, a two or one up to two of things will happen. When you download that zip file, Sometimes you will not see this blue folder. You'll just see the zip. So if you don't see this blue folder, you can click zip. And because we already have the blue folder, it just printed up a second folder. Now what I did when I downloaded my watermelon script from the font, it just had a zip and then it just had one TTF file. It's two files that you can download your fonts from. You can use the .otf or the .ttf. It didn't come with a README instruction or anything like that. It just came with a regular TTF file. So let me open up this file so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So I open up this Banana Yeti. It did not have a README. I believe this is a README. We're going to open that up and see what that is. Okay, this is a README file. Sometimes the files will say README, but you see that this one didn't say that. It says how the file was created. You know who was the creator a lot of these fonts are free to use if you're using it for personal use but if you're putting on items that you're selling you're asked to buy the commercial license so that you're able to be licensed to sell it and this is the link that you can use in order to purchase that okay so i'm gonna go ahead and exit out that that is the readme file so you have ttf right here you don't see otf so you're going to click ttf to download it And then this screen is going to pop up with different fonts. Okay, so that is what you're downloading. And it's showing you what you're downloading. You're going to click install font. And a screen is going to pop up here. But the correct screen that was supposed to pop up didn't. And this is where a lot of people get hung up when it comes to downloading fonts from thefont.com to their MacBook. And they think once they click it that it's installed, but it's not. So we're going to exit out this screen and click it again because I'm about to show you what screen you're supposed to see and that's how and even it shows it shows that it's not installed right here so we're going to try to install this font again and this is the screen that you're looking for once you select all fonts make sure that is checked install checked and now it's installed and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the beginning but while you're downloading your fonts you want to make sure that you're exited out of your Cricut Design Space tab at the top of your browser. Because if you don't exit out that tab first before you start installing your fonts, then you'll have to exit out of it anyway and reload it in order to see your new fonts that you've downloaded. So it's best just to go ahead and exit out of that tab and download all your fonts and bring back up your tab. So that's what I'm about to do now. I'm about to bring up my tab, my Cricut Design Space. And the name of the font is Banana Yeti. So I'm going to go to do a new project. I always use my middle name as a training tool. <laughs> training example. So I'm going to put Nicole. And then I'm going to select my font. You want to go into system fonts. Because that is where your font is going to be saved. And then I'm going to put Banana. Just to pull up the new font. There we go, and it popped up with no problem. Now also, I guess this is a two-in-one training. 
But what I learned when I first started cricketing was that this is how I were originally cut the name. But a lot of fonts that you will find will have these little curlies that I was talking about earlier. And it looks so much better, at least to me, because it's a personal preference when those curlies are touching. So what I do is I click the letter spacing and bring them together so that the curlies are touching. And awesome. I actually love this. Okay, so now the curlies are touching and everything is pretty spaced. Now, one more step that a lot of newbies actually forget is that once you put all your curlies together, if you do not weld it together, which is this button right here, when you cut it, it's going to cut the curlies into the next letter. So, give you kind of a visual again, like we're going to focus on the I and the C, how that's kicked up. If I put it together and I do not weld it, that little kick up part is going to cut into that C and it's not going to do well at all. It's not going to be a good cut. So once we get it to the spacing that we desire, we click weld and it's all one thing. No cuts, no curlies. All of the curlies are connected. So. That is how you download a font from the font.com and that is how you actually install the font onto your Apple MacBook and also an extra nugget was how to space out your curly lettering, your curly fonts so that you can do it like this and not have the curlies cut into the next line or next letter per se. So I hope that this video is useful to you.